So I recently had a conversation with a pretty high person at my fellowship program and I learned some really valuable information about fellowship interviews. You know, they stress about the MCAT step one, step two, your grades, research, but are these things really that important when it comes to applying for fellowships? And when you have been through this whole process for 10 years or so of training, what really matters? What do the fellowship programs look at? In this video today, I'm going to be talking about two important things that are, I think are important for fellowships. What do they look for, especially spine surgery? What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, you don't wanna miss them. So, we recently had fellowship interviews for spine surgery at my fellowship program. For those who don't know, when you are a fourth year resident, it's time to apply for fellowships. 90% of the people in orthopedics do a fellowship. This can be in sports medicine, foot and ankle, trauma surgery, spine surgery, joint replacements, oncology, hand surgery, shoulder and elbow, and these fellowships are usually one year, but there are some fellowship programs that are two years. And I was having a conversation with a person that is pretty high here in the fellowship program about applicants. And he had just interviewed a few applicants the day prior. I was just having a conversation. Hey, how did the uh, interviews go? That conversation led to my question of what do you exactly look for in applicants. We had about 10 to 15 applicants that day and I was just curious in terms of, you know, what do they care about at this point? Do they care about your step one score, or how much research you have, or your MCAT score, grades in medical school? Do those things really matter at this point? I was just curious. And what I found out was pretty interesting. I was told that the top two things that they look for in this fellowship program for spine surgery, and every fellowship program may be a little bit different. The directors and program chairmen, people that are over the fellowship programs, depending on your location, specialty, and the type of fellowship may look at different things. But for our fellowship program, the top two things were this. Number one was he stated that he would like someone who's nice and get along with. It's a pretty long fellowship year. It's a year that's a long time to be with someone. You have to be able to get along with that person and be teachable and be coached along the way. There are certain people that just can't get along with other people and they wanna know, are you nice enough to get along with everyone, including the nurses, the ancillary staff, everyone else at the fellowship program. And the way that they do that is that they interview you and they can pick up on a few things during the interview day. So that was one of the top two things. The second thing was actually that he calls the programs where you trained at and say, hey, will this applicant be a good person for my program? This person is pretty well connected in the orthopedic as well as spine surgery realm and he knows a lot of people. So what he does is he gets on the phone, makes a phone call to your training program. Say for instance, you trained in Tennessee. Hey, Dr. Such and Such, I'm calling to inquire about uh, a recent applicant that we had here you know, at our fellowship program. Uh, can you tell me about him? Do you think this person will be a good you know, fellow at our program? So that is why it's very important that you don't burn any bridges in medicine that you leave your programs on a pretty positive note and that you you know just do what you're supposed to be doing and you take care of patients um, you get to work on time you don't be mean to the nurses and to the ancillary staff and physical therapists the housekeepers just you know just do your job come to work and um, you know i think everything else will fall into place so, you know, grades at this point really don't matter that much. 
Some programs place a higher emphasis on research. Step one scores, probably not as much as important as it is for residents when you're applying to different residency programs. So what I took away from this is that the farther you get into your training, the farther you get away from being a resident or a medical student, the less emphasis is placed on these numbers that are pretty arbitrary. And you know, the MCAT is a test that is a weeding out test. It eliminates a large percentage of people that would be applying to medical school so that the medical schools can use that as a tool to differentiate one person from another. I don't think it's a really good, you know, estimate of how well or how good someone will be as a doctor, but they place a lot of emphasis on these scores, grades, organic chemistry. Nobody really cares after a certain amount of time what you scored in organic chemistry. I scored a C in it and um, it still beats me up to this day, but no one cares about that. They want to find someone that is nice, that can get along with everyone else, that's a team player, that works really hard, and most importantly, is that they take good care of patients. That's what most fellowship programs these days are looking for. You know, if you have research, if you have all these other accolades, those things are good, but, um, you know, patient care is most important. Being a team player, getting along with everyone else, and just a hard worker. So. I just wanted to uh, share those insights that I gained uh, with you guys. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.